Hi, I'm Jake. In this video, we'll be making a pair of woolen Viking trousers based on an artifact that was recovered from the Hedeby settlement in Viking Age Denmark. Now, if you've seen any of our other videos, you know I'm gonna take a minute to talk about the historical context, about the pants, about the archeological find, and then how we can bring these together to make a plausible piece of clothing that goes along with your Viking outfit. Now, if you'd prefer, you can skip right to this time in the video and it will put you right at the construction of these pants. Otherwise, stay tuned and we'll get there soon. I think I've probably mentioned this book in every video that we've done so far. If you haven't checked it out, I'm not sure what you're waiting for, but it's a great book, great resource. I'm gonna read a little bit about the pants that Kamal Rebiega mentions in some of this research, specifically about these baggy trousers. He says, the harbor finds suggest that in the 10th century, two types of lower garments were worn, long hose with straight long legs and loose baggy breeches. He then goes on to talk about the hose that we made in a previous video. But then back to the breeches, he says, the 10th century baggy breeches in Denmark seem to be confirmed by the existing interpretations of preserved textile fragments from Hedeby, numbered 72A-B and 91A. They were made of wool, a narrow cone-shaped part of the front gore, fragments of legs, and back gore have been preserved. The element interpreted as the front gore is made of a plain woven rep cloth with a ZZ and ZS twist and the thread density from 12 to 25 in the warp and from eight to 18 of the weft per one centimeter. It consists of smaller fragments dyed red and green. The fragment has a thickness of one millimeter while the legs are made of a thin 0.5 millimeter loosely woven material. A fragment of the leg was plainly woven from a ZZ twist yarn and has a density of 25 warp threads and 16 to 18 weft threads per one centimeter. It is dyed red. So if this textile fragment in question is actually a pair of baggy breeches, it would in fact be corroborated by loads of iconography that actually does survive from the Viking Age, including the Osseberg tapestry, picture stones. I mean, it's everywhere, especially early on in the Viking Age. Personally, I think that there really isn't too much to debate here regarding this style of leg wear. We saw a lot of debate perhaps with some of the other garments that we've made so far, but I think this type of leg wear was actually markedly Scandinavian and maybe just fell into disuse over time as more straight-legged fashion became favorable due to influences from continental Europe. Even though the archeological record is relatively narrow for this type of legwear, we do see so many other resources pointing us to the fact that this is a plausible means of legwear for the time period and something that we could use for our Hedeby persona. Okay, so I won't ramble on too much more about the context. Let's get started with the construction. The first thing that you're gonna need, well, is some wool. I've got this blue wool that I intended to use for another project, but never actually made that article of clothing. We're gonna use it here. I think it's gonna be a great fit for our pants. You'll also need a good pair of scissors, some needles to do your hand stitching, thread of your choosing, a soft tape measure to take your measurements, and a pen and paper because this pattern is quite complicated. At its core, it's quite simple. It's only a few pieces but you'll see just in a minute what I mean about having to draw this out, sort of mind map which piece goes where and how big each piece needs to be to make sure that the measurements fit you. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I'm over at my desk, which apologies for any background noise, it's right by a busy street. Um, but what I've done is I've created this schematic because this is what I mean about it basically being simple at its core. You only have five different pieces um, but the way in which they go together can be a little bit tricky. Now, I found two patterns online. One was in German, the other one was in Russian. And aside from the fact that they weren't in English, I couldn't really understand them because of the way that the pattern was actually drawn. What I did was I sort of put them together in my mind and tried to come up with an ideal scenario of how to cut out these pieces from your fabric. And then I made this watercolored version here just so that you can see the differences of which piece goes where and sort of how they fold up together. 
Now I recognize this isn't my best work in terms of schematics. Maybe I'll come up with a digital version at some point, um, but I'll put this on our website. This will be at vikinghistory.com. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below and you can go and download this for free. And maybe if you want, you can white out this table um, and just put in your own measurements. But let's talk really quick about the pieces. So you only need these five pieces. You'll need two of the number one, You'll need one of the number two, three, and four pieces, and then two of these number five pieces. Essentially, the two number one pieces just get folded together like this, and they become the tubes for the legs. The number two and three pieces become that crotch gusset that goes in the middle. The number four piece is the waistband there up at the top, and then the two number five pieces are the cuffs down around your knees or your calf area. Now here's the tricky part though. This pattern isn't just straight edge to straight edge and you sew them together like you would for most other garments. Instead, what we're gonna do is take D, which even though it's a curved piece, we'll sort of straighten it out and match it to B2. And that is gonna give us this seam right here. The result will be this curved piece, E, right here, will become this saddle in between, which is where the crotch gusset will actually match up to. And now you can see there's a little overhang that I'm calling E1, and there's also this area called B1 here up at the top. Those two areas will match to number three, which is the back part of the crotch gusset, more like the seat of your pants. You can see down here that it matches up to the number two piece, forming the complete crotch gusset. And then there's a little bit of overhang on either side. That's what actually connects to the E1, these little lips here on the, on the sides. And then of course, what we'll do is we'll take the top portion of these two tubes, pleat them so that they match up to the shape of the number four piece, which is the waistband. And then the bottom parts of the tubes will get pleated as well, and they'll match up to the two number five pieces. All right, so that's how you read this chart. Hopefully that was helpful enough to you. Again, this will be available on our website. You can just download it for free, um, but we'll get started and sort of make this into a practical garment and you can follow along and see how we do this in real time.
Well, so far so good, but I think we need to address this waistline. So last night while watching TV, I actually finished a lot of the construction for these pants. You'll notice that I did all of the pleats all around the waistline, and I even attached the waistband. But what I need to do now is actually fold it in half and sew it on the inside, the same way that we did the cuff that goes around the ankles. So once I finish that, I'll show you what they look like, especially with them on, because I think that's quite important. Um, and then I'll also move on to adding the last component, which is the belt loops. Okay, so here are the Finnish constructed pants. I gotta be honest, <laughs> I hate this style. I hate this fashion of, of, of clothing. I think that the poofy pants thing is awful. Maybe that's just me being jaded as a reenactor and really uh, I hate seeing like the roost pants thing everywhere. Um, but having said that, I think these came out great. I'm really, really happy with the construction. Uh, you can see I've even uh, ironed in these pleats up here at the top around the waistband. And I think they look really nice. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happier with how these came out, even though I'm really just not a fan of this style. But yeah, I think these are gonna work out great. They come right underneath the knee, so I can put some spur, some leg wraps down, and I think those will look really nice with this. Um, but the last thing that I have left to do is to put some belt loops around. So I'm gonna show you in just a minute how I'm gonna construct those belt loops, and then I'll probably make about six of them. So two here in the front, one on either side around my hips, and then two in the back as well. I really don't like the five belt loops that you see on jeans. I think that it, it kind of pulls against a belt in the back, um, kind of creates a warp in the actual belt itself, and it also is a little bit uncomfortable. So if I'm gonna be wearing these, maybe even in combat or uh, under chain mail or something like that, I think I'd like to have a little bit extra support and just comfiness around the waist. So that's up next. Um, but yeah, I really like how these came out. Plenty of, plenty of movement. If, if that's really your goal, uh, these are the style of pants for you. So I'm over by the window with some better lighting because I wanted to show how I'm actually making these belt loops. And what I've done is I've just cut a square piece of the fabric just from a little bit of excess that I had left over. And I'm folding it in half and then stitching it up along this seam. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll show you um, what it looks like turned inside out. So there you can see the seam just right at the top maybe about a quarter of an inch thick. And then what I've also been doing is using a whip stitch around the edge because this seam is not going to get a whole lot of wear and tear, um, which would cause it to fray. But just in case, because it will be turned inside out and I won't be able to see it, in case it does start to fray, I don't want it entirely to fall apart. So all I'm doing is, um, just doing a bit of a whip stitch around the edge to protect it a little bit more. And now I'm just tying off the ends to make sure that uh, this seam doesn't unravel. And now it's just a matter of taking this piece and turning it inside out. And there it is. So it's turned inside out. And I've got a few more of them done and we'll go ahead and add these to our pants and we'll be finished. Thank you. 
Well, here they are. Here's the finished pair of pants. I think they came out great. Again, not my favorite style of pants. I think they're overused and just personally, I think they're goofy based on our modern standards, but they fit perfectly. I mean, they are, they are very comfortable. I do see the allure of why many reenactors do like them. Um, and I am also wearing a belt here that is not a find based on uh, anything from Hedeby or Denmark for that matter. I think this is actually um, a strap end and a buckle from Ireland, but I'll be making a Hedeby belt in another video. So more on that next time. Uh, but for now, yeah, the pleats look great. Um, I think they look really, really nice with these undyed um, spior or what many people call winningas, these leg wrappings. And I have an onion skin dyed linen tunic that I've purposely tucked in so that you can see the belt line, all the, the belt loops and everything. I'm, I'm pretty pleased and pretty happy to add this to my Viking persona, and I hope it was helpful for you and that you can do the same. The only thing that I will say, and I may have mentioned this earlier in the video, but because I did not measure this crotch piece, the distance uh, from the front to the back correctly, I ended up having to add this separate little piece here at the front, just this little trapezoid. And I also had to add one here in the back. It's probably hard to see because it's a, quite a bit smaller. Um, but do yourself a favor, don't mess up like I did, and measure twice, cut once. Um, that's that's the, really the biggest takeaway here. But yeah, all in all, it's, it's very hard to see that small mistake anyhow, uh, especially if I'm wearing a longer tunic over this. So I'm pretty pleased with the way they came out. I like them. And here's some more cinematic shots of the pants. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this information helpful, consider giving us a like or share with your medieval minded friends. You can also subscribe and make sure to turn on that notification bell so you get all the updates. If there's something you think we could have done better, or maybe there's a topic you'd like to see in another video, comment below. We always love hearing the feedback. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.